Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we have something that's really exciting. We have the brand new Microtik CRS 312 4C Plus 8XG switch, which is a 12 port, 10 gigabit switch that costs under $500 and has some really good features. And in this review, we're gonna take a look at some of the great things about the switch. We're gonna take a look at some of the things that maybe aren't so good. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a good idea of whether or not the switch is for you. This switch is part of Microtik's cloud router switch series, which means that you can use either router OS or you can use switch OS with it. And that means that this isn't just a dumb unmanaged switch. There are actually a lot of management features. You could run a DNS server on it, for example, or DHCP server. We suggest not doing that because the processor isn't too strong, but you could if you wanted to. One of the big features, of course, is the 12 10 gig or 10 G base T ports of the switch. Now you'll see a lot of kind of lower end switches that have eight ports and usually those are SFP plus ports because it's just cheaper to make a switch. Microtik with this switch actually made a 12 10 G base T switch but they didn't just stop there. Instead, there are four combo switch port. That allows you to use either 10G base T or it allows you to use SFP plus if you needed optics, DACs, or if it's just easier because the particular machine you're trying to connect uses SFP plus. There's also an out-of-band management port, a console port. And so, you know, there are a lot of things here that you would see on higher end switches and you just don't see on $500 switches. Now, if we move to the rear, what you're going to notice is another feature and that is there's a number of fans, but there's also redundant power supplies. So this is not just a switch with a single power supply. So if your A power fails, you're done. This actually has A and B power. So you can keep this up with a BBU or a second power source. There are even little power supply locks. So if you move the power cable or one of those power sources to the switch, you're not gonna pull the cable out because you can lock it in place with those little wire locks. Now, there are fans. There are four fans. That's a lot of fans for a little tiny switch like this. And it's probably one of the weak points of the overall switch experience because, well, we're gonna show you inside and we're gonna explain why they're kinda loud. You'll see these fans are pretty typical 1U units. And when we look inside, you can kinda see the entire layout of the switch. There are the redundant power supplies on the left, when you look at it from the rear, of course. And then on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the switch motherboard, but you also see all the fans. Now these fans are three pin fans, even though there are four pin headers. We kind of wish that Microtik just made four pin PWM fans in this so you could have better fan control. Those fans are there for a reason. They're there to do work and that work is to cool this giant heat sink. And there's, so you can see this giant heat sink with a pretty massive heat pipe solution. And from this angle, it really doesn't look that big. So we're gonna change the view and you can see just how honking big this heat sink really is. You might think because this has a giant heat sink that it's gonna be quiet, but you would be totally wrong. When we fired up the switch, we actually heard idle noise around 42 dBA, which is pretty darn loud. I mean, this thing is way too loud to put on your desktop. You definitely need it in an equipment closet. And that's a real shame because for $500, this could have been just the absolute category killer desktop switch. Performance wise, you really want to use this as a level one or level two switch. You don't really want to use level three routing features because it just doesn't have the processor to do it, but it's a $500 switch. So we'll give it a pass there. The idle power is just shy of 26 watts before you plug anything in. The technical specs give you 60 watts as a maximum on the rating. We never got quite that high, but we got pretty close. So you just have to kind of keep in mind that this is a 10 G based T switch. So therefore you're going to have more power consumption for a $500 switch. Overall, this thing is absolutely awesome. We just wish that Microtik spent a little bit more engineering resources, making the switch quiet, which would pretty much kill almost every other switch in this category. Thanks for watching. You can check out more on the STH main site and see other content from our awesome STH team. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see whatever's coming out next.